Hi everyone, so we're going to be doing a second example on how to grab APIs. So this is another way on how you can use um, Axios with um, async await and then using use states in order to store the data that has been grabbed from online and then using it on your web page as needed. So let's first get started here. This is just a default template. Um, I, got, I removed all the stuff above the export and only left with the div in between the return. Um, if you want to know how to set up a basic um, Next.js app from scratch and just go into the index page, you have to watch the video down in the description box below on how to set up this index page or like this new Next.js um, application on your computer. So let's get started. What I want to do first is I'm going to import a few different items here. So import use state because I'm going to be using this. And if you don't know what a use state is yet, you can watch some of my videos that I'll leave in the description box below. And I'm also going to import Axios from Axios because this is um, really important in order to help me grab the information from online. And in order to actually use this Axios, we have to install something in our package.json file here. And in order to do this, we have to write a few terminal commands, just one terminal command. So let's go to terminal, new terminal. And what I'm going to be typing here is I'm going to be writing npm. I'm just going to be installing npm install Axios. And this will save the Axios in our package.json file. And so let's do this, npm install Axios. So if we go into our package.json, um, we should have Axios right here in our dependencies. So let's go back to index here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to add a few items above the return, but in the export still. And we're going to be defining two use states. The first use state that we're going to be running is the number of movies. So let's write const and then num movies set num movies is equal to use state of zero and then const movies set movies is equal to use state and we're going to put that in an array. So it's going to be right inside the brackets, an array like that. I will explain that shortly. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to add a few things as well. Let's just finish everything before the return. So let's actually grab the Ghibli movies from online. So we'll call it get Ghibli movies is equal to async and then we'll write the arrow and we'll have the curly brace bracket and then we will actually get the information now. Result. Since we have async we'll set up a wait here and with the axios with a dot get. So this is just saying um, use Axios to get this information from the URL. So we're going to get this the information from this URL right over here. It'll be provided down in the description box below as well. And what we'll do is I want to just console.log the results. So right over here, Right now, we're not really doing anything. We're just actually just grabbing the information. And let's just put a button here. So only when the user clicks on the button, then we'll get the information. So we'll put on click is equal to, we have to put this uh, brackets with the arrow sign in order to make sure it doesn't run right away when the actual um, page renders. So we're just going to call that function from up here. 
So we just have to make sure it's spelled exactly correctly. So it, it's able to find um, itself. So it's able to find that specific function. So we just have to make sure that the function we define up here matches the name um, here on the on click as well. So then it's able to communicate with one another based on this async await function happening here and the button happening right over here so they can communicate to one another. And I'm just going to write in the button get all movies, save it, and let's actually check to see what it looks like in our console log. I'm going to run it, so npm run dev. So when the website is finally done um, loading, we get this button right here, get all movies. And if we go to our console, you can see nothing shows up because it only runs that function when we click on the button. So when we click on it, you can see here on the right side, we get the data. And if we click on the arrow, let's see, we get a bunch of information and we have to go inside this data. And you can see here where we get all 22 different movies again. So just like on the previous video, if you watched it, if you haven't watched the previous video, I'll be putting the link in the description box below, but it's the exact same information. It's just another way of grabbing the information. And you can see here, we got the same information from that API. We can grab the ID, we can grab the title of the movie, and just a lot more information. It's a similar way of grabbing information from an API. Um, there's just so many different ways that you can do it. And now that we have this information in our console, we want to actually display this information in on our actual page. So let's go back to our code here. In order to display some sort of information on our screen, let's first grab this and save this data. So let's do set num movies and result dot data dot length. So we'll just grab the length or how many movies we'll be getting and we'll set the movies. So we're going to grab all the movies from online and then we're going to put it in our array that we specified up at the top and we're going to grab all of the result dot data because all the information is in the dot data right here. The dot data is referring to this area right over here, data. So in our data, we have the information. So we're grabbing all the results in the data and we're placing it in our use state right over here because it is an array and it's containing the array of all of the movies that are in the API. And this one right here just um, displays the number of movies that we have. And now if we want to actually display some sort of data on our screen, let's say we want to only show a few different things first. So let's grab actually the number of a number of movies we have first. So we can say there are number and then we put the curly brace bracket and we can call num movies. The num movies refers to this um, use state at the top. The set num movies will determine the data length and it will be placed in the use state and this set num movies is referencing this one right here. So it's grabbing all the results, the, it's just putting in the number length and we'll have it in the use state, it'll update. So whenever we call num movies, we should get the length of how many movies we have stored. So there are number num movies, movies from the database. Let's save it. And let us check here. So you can see here it starts off at zero. And even though it says we have zero, it's because it only shows when we actually click on the button. So let me refresh the page here. There was just a bunch of red errors on the right side because um, we've been doing changes while I save it on the spot. So right here, there's nothing going on. It's just zero. So in order to invoke that function, we have to click on the button 
And you can see here, now the number here on the screen changes to number 22, and it matches the exact same number here in our data. It says array 22, or down here it says length 22. So now you can see this is how um, you're able to grab the length of how much data you have in, your, in the API you want to call. So let's go back to the code. And let's say we want to actually grab one of the items. In order to do this, let's do the curly brace brackets. What we're going to do is only based on if num movies is greater than zero. So only if there are some type, at least one movie in the number of movie array. So at least if it's above zero, then we will display something here. And what we want to do is so what we want to do is, let's write a div here. And in between here, we're going to actually just type a message. So title of the first movie that comes back from the database. And we will put in curly brace brackets, we'll put movies. So movies refers to up over here, this movies. So set movies contains all of the movies. Set movies is all of the movies in this use state. But we want to just grab one individual movie, so we have to call movies. And so in the movies, we have a specific title, like we can do dot title. The reason I know this is if we go back to our API over here, and let me check the data here. If I go into the first one, you can see here we got something called title. So this is what, what I want to display on my computer screen right now. Let's go back over here. And in order to do this, we also have to add the position. This is the initial position in that API. It's the zeroth position. Because if we go back here as well, we can see if I click on the button, you can see in the data, it starts at 0 and then goes all the way to 21. So we're just grabbing the 0th position and we're grabbing the title from here. So it should display castle in the sky. And as you can see, it does. Title of the first movie that comes back from the database, castle in the sky. So we got our first item from our API. But what happens if we want to actually loop through all of this information? Now, let's actually try to, to do something else. Let's put num movies is greater than zero. And let's say movies dot map. So we're going to loop through all of the different movies right here because movies right here, movies is just one specific movie. But we want to loop through everything here in this use state because it contains an array of items. And in order to loop through an array, it's easier to use a dot map. And there should be another video that I'll make on dot map and how it works. Um, but dot map just helps loop through arrays a lot more efficiently and easily. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to call in our map, we're going to have two different values. So the first item is usually the actual the actual one's specific data per movie. So we can just say, let's just call it movie. And then we'll say the next one is index. So the first time it loops through in this map, we're just looking at one movie. And then we're grabbing the index, which, you know, it starts at zero first. And then it goes all the way down to 21. And in order to actually display this, we need the arrow function with the bracket. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a div. And then right here, what we want to do is we want to, let's first add the image. Um, SRC is equal to. Because an uh, image is given to us, we can put movie.image. And let's just first see 
what this shows. So let me close the image tag, save it. And this is what the code should look like at first because we just want to first see all the movies that are going to be map mapping through our array of movies. And let's go over here. So refreshes, let's click the button. So you can see here, if we scroll down, we get all of the 22 different movie images. So what we, you can see here that we get an error. It says that there's a unique key prop that is missing. And this is something I discussed in the previous video. If you want to see it, I, it's down in the description box below, but I'll show you how to fix it here as well. And what we have to do is we actually have to add a key here in the div because in order to make things unique for each div, we need to add some kind of ID which makes it different from each of the different divs that are being created. And we have to add this key prop. And this i variable, we actually will put it as index because that's what we called it. So in order to understand what these two items do, please watch my previous or my other video on how to on how map methods work because I'll make a more simpler explanation video on how to understand dot map methods. But we can use this index and then we'll get the position which will be added as our key and make each of the new divs unique. So we'll save it and we'll go back to our browser. Let's refresh the page. So if I actually click on the button now, you can see on the right side that error message has disappeared. This error message has disappeared because we already gave it a unique identifier or unique key for each of these new divs that are that have been added. And the reason I know these are all new divs because if I right click an image and inspect, you can see here we got a bunch of different divs. This represents all of the movies that have been added onto our screen. So as I scroll down, these are all the different movies that are that have been shown on our screen and it just creates a div as it maps through in that map method. So let us add another description here. So let's say after the image we want to add the title. And what we can do is let's put the curly brace bracket and we can just put movie.title. So anything that you want to grab you just need to do a dot and then whatever item you want to call from that specific one movie, you just put that title exactly there. So if I save it, refresh the page, and I'll push the button. If I scroll down, you can see here Castle in the Sky, the image, but down below underneath it says Castle in the Sky. And then below here, the image, and then Grave of the Fireflies. So, as you can see here, it's just looping through all of the information. If I go to console, we're just taking all of the data and looping through each one. So if we're at position zero, we're grabbing the title here, the title, but we're also grabbing the image. So the image is right over here. And we're just grabbing that URL so we could display the actual image on our screen. And this is what your code should look like once it is done. I'm going to be posting a copy of this on the actual GitHub repository that I've created. So, you know, something, this is something you can just play around with, but you know, you can grab other items as well. So maybe not just title, but we could just call dot original underscore title, save it. This is just for the first position. And when you go here, you can see castle in the sky and then that original title beside it. So you can play around with all of these different keys here and just grab the information you want. 
and display what you need in order to manage the information. You can always reference the code that I will be posting on GitHub.